Welcome to Rocky Mountain Renewal. My name is Victoria. I'm originally from England. I married an American and after living all over the world, we settled in Manitou Springs, Colorado. We bought a 100 year old former boarding house and outbuildings, which needed complete renovation. It has been a labor of love and lots of hard work, but we still find time to have fun and explore the amazing place we live in. Come join us on our journey as we renew our home and our spirits in the beautiful Rocky Mountains. Hi everybody, so today's going to be a little different. I'm going to be going to my favourite place, which is the Antiques Marketplace in Colorado Springs, and then I'll be making some plans for the attic with Nathaniel. Hi, so we are at American Marketplace Antiques Mall in Colorado Springs and I am here today to try and find my daughter a desk of some sort because she got a sewing machine for Christmas and after having shifted around our bedrooms once again to give her a bit more space as she's um, homeschooling and she is doing a lot of craft work we decided uh, she needed a lot more room so we've shifted around but she needs an extra desk now for her sewing she's into crafts and so on so i want to find a little desk for her um it's going to be kind of tricky because a lot of her furniture are sort of um mismatched um uh, types of wood so we've got some darker things in here and some sort of piney colored wood so i'm not quite sure what i'm looking for exactly but um this antiques mall has a lot a lot going on in there um lots of little stalls and they frequently have um good sales especially this time of year um so i'm gonna pop on in and have a little look around i don't think i'll be able to have um my microphone on in there because they tend to have music in the background and I'm still not sure about how that works with YouTube if you have um, music that you don't have copyright permission to I don't know if it's um, if it's in the background that's an issue um, or not so maybe if somebody could tell me in the comments because I've got no clue whatsoever um, but anyway I'll show you some of the pieces around there if I'm allowed to film which I'm kind of hoping so so um, whenever we go into the marketplace my husband goes a bit nuts because I always go and look at everything I shouldn't be looking at and not what I should be looking at. So I can't help myself. There are 300 uh, different vendors in the marketplace and I love to look at just about every store. Um, <laughs> so here are some little limo trinket boxes, They're really cute. Beneath this is a bunch of jade, I think, from China and then lots of other little goodies beneath there. The, this little stall has a lot of costume jewellery also. Um, I like to look at it, it's not my kind of thing, but it's just fun to see little pieces from various decades and uh, the style at the time. As you'll see as we go around the stalls, um, the prices, I guess, are quite a lot higher than what you would find in um, some of the brocons in France. Um, I love the bargains that you can get over there. It's absolutely incredible to me. Those sort of prices, I guess, you'd find in sort of thrift, thrift stores or uh, charity stores here. Um, but in this antique mall, the prices are... I mean, they're reasonable, but some of them are a little bit too high, I think, sometimes you'll see um, as we go around. Um, I'm actually looking for some lamps as well for my bedroom, so um, I keep on checking out those. This is a little cup. I think that was another Limoges. There's quite a lot of Limoges in this antique stall. That's quite a pretty little cup, I thought.
So you can find just about anything in this marketplace, uh, even an Egyptian sarcophagus, I think that's what they're called. Um, I think this one, I can't quite remember, I think it was 2000 something dollars, uh, just in case you need one for your hallway or something like that. Um, I quite like this candlestick holder, it was really quite pretty as well, but again, a little bit pricey. Um, there's a lovely sort of Christmas tree figurine there. Um, not quite sure about that, but So I think this rack here was something from a post office as far as I could understand. Um, this little store's more Americana, um, lots of, sort of twee things in here. I quite like this sort of uh, dresser here, it's quite ornate. I like the carving, there's lions on the front, but it doesn't really fit in with um, the decor in my house, really. We don't have too many sort of carved things like that. Okay, I'm really sorry about filming this the wrong way round. This is, yes, very amateur as you can see. Um, lots of um, jewellery there again, mainly just costume jewellery. Um, they do have some fine jewellery also in various other departments, but uh, again, I was reminded that's not what we're shopping for today. So <laughs> there's some lovely tiaras and they're really quite pretty. Yeah. Back to the plates and the cups. Not going to be going near them either. <laughs> and a nice gramophone, which actually was, I don't know if it was it'd been modernized or something like this. Yeah, $74, $74.95, which seems quite cheap. Not quite sure what this little um, store was all about. There's lots of little tiny glass figurines, all different animals, Russian dolls beneath there. There's a little glass hedgehog at the front there, uh, two in fact, um, and then sort of gemstones I think from the area. But yeah, I uh, was quite confused with them. <laughs> I don't know if they're collectible or not. Again, uh, this region is known for a lot of the minerals and. Um, stones that could be mined around this area so you see a lot of jewelry like this with the natural stones and this was quite pretty all these butterflies i like there was a blue one I, yeah i like that blue one up there i love the cloche i really want the, one of those cloche um pieces to do something with i don't know what yet but i really like one of them downstairs as long as the cats do not knock it over as they're known to do Again, more costume jewellery. So I was quite intrigued by the design of this teapot and the cups and saucers beneath. I hadn't seen this before and when I flipped it over I was really surprised to see it said spode on the bottom. And I wondered if anyone knew anything about this design. Um, I was, yeah, I was a bit confused with the, I don't know if that's an eagle there. If anyone knows anything about it I'd love to hear. Um, but it seems slightly different to the spode that I've seen before. Some more little gorgeous cups and saucers. There's some beautiful Japanese ones beneath there that I thought were quite elegant. 
Um, again, I'm not meant to be shopping for these. I'm not even meant to be looking at them. So I'm just being a bit sneaky here. It says Mikasa, Mikasa. And again, this was a spode plate. And I believe there's something on the back. I didn't quite understand the process in which it was made or whether this is the traditional way. It said under glaze print from a hand engraved copper plate. I don't know if that's normal for spode or not, but uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. I really like this desk or bureau as it may be called. I love the inlay, I think it's just absolutely beautiful. It's $239. I think I might go back and take a second look at that because I really rather like it and have a spot in mind for it downstairs. So I might may have a little chat with my husband about that. <laughs> This piece was absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's got a real Japanesey feel to it. Um, it had all these lovely little compartments and secret little drawers and so on. Um, I thought it was just absolutely beautiful. It was $350, but the lady said it was potentially negotiable. Um, I just thought it was lovely, but I don't, our rooms are very light. I can't imagine which room it would go in. You need quite a dramatic room, I think, for something like this, but I really loved it. It was beautiful. If I could have bought a tea set today, this would have been it. I absolutely love the leaf design, the deco-y feel, and of course it is from Limoges. It's absolutely elegant, beautiful. I would just love that. I think I'm going to ask for that for my birthday. <laughs> Lots of other fun little pieces here from Ireland. I'm not quite sure if this is a pewter or what this was. A nice little pieces for cocktail hours and so on. I think this is Beatrix Potter, there's some, this is the um, Peter Rabbit. I can't remember, was it Samuel, Samuel Whiskers, that was it. Very cute.
So Colorado is one of the most mineralized um, areas in the states. Um, there are a lot of gemstones to be found here. You can go out on um, particular trips to go um, looking for these. You can find probably not as big as this, but there's amethyst, quartz, and let's see, lapis lazuli, and um, topaz is another one you can find here. Um, we found little tiny bits of um, these gemstones on hikes and things like that, but you can't, you shouldn't take um, many of the pieces uh, from the land unless you're, you have like permit to go on a private um, piece of land that may contain some of these stones, then you can collect it. Um, but these ones are absolutely massive and they cost sort of between hundreds to thousands, depending on the size. I think they're absolutely beautiful, beautiful pieces. It's amazing what comes from the earth, but uh, yeah, so a lot of jewellery is made from these pieces also. Um, locally, just a little store down the road from us here, they sell various gemstones and minerals at reasonable prices, so my daughter collects those also, besides owls and animals and god knows what. This stall has mainly uh, taxidermy, uh, as you can see, uh, the various uh, antlers, deer heads, goats, uh, all sorts of things and stuff. It's not my thing at all. I don't go for that. I've got plenty of deer in the back garden on a daily basis. We have herds coming through that munch just about anything that's left in there now. Not that much in the winter time, but if anyone wants some elk antlers or even an entire Dear, what was that? Is that a hog of some kind? Um, then this is the place you need to go. But uh, no, not for me in the slightest, but each to their own, obviously. So this was the desk that I found for Viola, my daughter. Um, it came with the original sewing machine, which was from 1959 and still worked. Um, she's been given an electric uh, or like a computerized, up-to-date sewing machine. But um, if she didn't have that, then uh, she could have gone with this older one. But it's wonderful. It's perfect because you can fold the, well, the sewing machine folds down into the desk part and then it's got little flaps on either side that can be folded in um, so she could work or do her schoolwork on there also um, but she's very excited and it came with a little chair as well which is actually quite sturdy and heavy it was surprisingly heavy um, and I got that for $80 so I was pretty pleased with that. Okay so we're back up in the attic again we're going to start doing some work up here in the next few weeks um, as I said before, we're going to be switching around this staircase. So rather than coming up from that door there, it is going to come up this this way. And come up this way. It's kind of hard to explain, but coming up this way um, from what is the laundry closet downstairs. So we're going to have to make a um, sort of platform across here, and we're actually going to have the door. Um, once you come up these stairs um, to the left over here, it will be on the right as you, well, I suppose as you come up the left, come up the stairs, it'll be on the left there. So what will happen is you come into what is a currently an absolute mess. It's a storage room right up in the eaves here. There's a sort of dormer window, as I've shown before. Um, so the door will be in this wall over here. So we'll come up the stairs, we'll come through this room. We're going to actually knock through, excuse the mess, knock through this wall here, which will take us into, which was, this room, this room was bedroom number seven. I've shown this in one of my videos already. Um, so it will come through this wall here and essentially be like a corridor leading through into what will be a bedroom of some sort. As you can see, there's a huge amount of work to be done up here. Lots of plastering, lots of paint, lots of everything essentially. We've got to put all the insulation down, 
take all the old stuff out. The only problem with this room is this massive chimney that runs right through the middle of it, but we can't do anything about that because it, well, it has to stay there. So we're going to have to work with this space somehow and be quite creative. And as you can see, sorry, there's lots of dust in the air here. Um, you can come down here into what is sort of like a corridor essentially and my husband Nathaniel is working in here right now which is why there's all Hello. the dust motes all around he is do you want to tell everybody what you're working on I'm uh, just getting the wiring cleaned up uh, before we start work on the uh, third floor here I'm setting junction boxes and um, just basically cleaning everything up so we can get prepped for it we had when we uh, rewired the house we had wiring uh, and plumbing run up to the third floor here so we could uh, eventually do something with it. So um, that's all coming up through this, uh, basically the this stack here where the plumbing and the electrical are coming up. I have Smurf tube for running more wire if we need to. Um, but I'm just getting stuff cleaned up really so we can uh, start figuring out uh, where to put the new wiring for up here and uh, where to run it. Yeah. Over there in the box, you can show them that's all the old knob and tube wiring we tore out. Uh, up here we're trying to uh no not there that's the, the fan box. isn't it where's the box right next to you where right literally oh this <laughs> <laughs> all right the big giant box of wires, the... yeah okay right there's the box yeah that's all the uh old knob and tube wiring and uh other stuff that was up here so yeah so there's lots of storage space down here but the plan is <laughs> shush, the plan is to actually put an ensuite look at all the dust in there you didn't really notice it until it's well, all on screen my mask on you probably yeah see it. i probably should um well i'm going to be going back downstairs soon but um we're going to put an ensuite bathroom in here and we're going to have to configure it somehow in this area because this is where the plumbing is all around this area here isn't it what's that the plumbing uh yeah well this is the this is the vent stack yeah and uh our hot and cold water come up over there uh, you can barely see the red uh pecs coming up so this is where everything comes from so in order to get the the drain slope correct for a toilet or a shower or a sink um, we're gonna have to be close enough to the side of the house that we can we can tie into the main drain um and what's the measurement i can't remember what you said the angle it has to be dropped um, something every my, my belief and again i'm not a plumber so i'd have to check the code but it's uh i think it's one quarter every foot one okay. quarter inch every foot essentially so okay um you know you have to drop a couple inches if you go yeah 12 feet or something it's three inches and with only six inches of space in the floor mm -hmm. um there's not a lot of room to maneuver there so the yeah. closer we can get it to the drain stack the easier it's going to be yeah so somehow we're going to have to and any ideas would be appreciated we're going to incorporate a toilet somewhere around here um a sink and then a shower i'll go in and listen if possible on the shower if possible with the shower somewhere around here and um, but as you can see it's a uh, bit tricky with the ceiling it comes down we sort of lose height here so we'd have to work that one out I kind of want to put it here but that's not going to work in terms of the plumbing unless we pull everything up here which sounds like it'd be pretty tricky so we we're gonna also have to talk with the code or our uh, regional building department about the uh, insulation requirement because if Victoria directs you to the exposed ceiling uh anywhere i don't know if you can see it um there's zero insulation between the roof uh sheeting and the interior mm -hmm. uh despite that people were living up here apparently at some point uh the boarding house was, yeah, yeah the boarding there's a number on the door and there was wallpaper on the walls and people are living up here there's gas this is old gas so there are gas heaters up uh, here a gas heater which is not going to happen again we're going to go with what do you call them this, um, this probably either, base, base uh, radi board. radiant heat, underfloor radiant electric or uh, baseboards but um you can imagine uh the joy of trying to heat a completely uninsulated basement with a uh, gas uh, attic uh, yes uninsulated attic with a uh, a gas heater when it's 
six degrees outside oh, or something freezing. like that. So. But it's amazing uh, how hot it yeah. gets up here in the summer, though. It's absolutely well, that's baking. Insulation, it's, yeah. Insulation for both the uh, heating and cool. So. Yeah. So we've got this little space here. There's another storage room, which we just emptied out yesterday. And in fact, rather than working on the studio, um, we decided to work on the attic first. So everything that was up here has now been moved three floors down to the studio, which was fun. You see, it's a cold winter's day out there. That's our cottage that we rent out at the back there. You can't quite see it behind the juniper tree. You see the mountains there behind us. And that's our studio. This is all with the white ceiling down here, which was what we think was the original kitchen to the house. And so, yeah, a lot of work to be done, but this is our project for this year. We are hoping when travel is permitted and everyone's healthy that we can have family come stay and this would be a useful extra space to shove children, <laughs> keep them away from everyone. <laughs> but um, yeah, so as you can see, lots and lots of work, lots of paper to come down again. As I mentioned before, there could be um, arsenic in these papers so we have to be very careful when we take this down all needs replastering what do you think about wallpaper up here i think that's your decision that'd be quite cool wouldn't it we haven't wallpapered yeah. anything in this house ah it's an idea time for some ferro and ball samples yeah absolutely i hadn't thought about that actually all right well, all right, well we might do that we can see outside here it's a bit of a clearer day again the Insect mesh makes it difficult to see, but yeah, there we go. One or two. Yeah, so lots and lots to get on with. And then we need to figure out the flooring. These things can't be salvaged. They're just a bit of a mess. So we're going to have to make a decision where none of the house is carpeted. It's all got the original wooden floors and we've just put rugs down. Um, so far, apart from the kitchen and the bathrooms, those are tiled, um, but we're not quite sure what we'll do up here. We probably will carpet this one just to maintain the warmth and also make it a bit quieter because these things are just so creaky and noisy. Our entire house is creaky everywhere you walk. You can hear where everybody is, which is a good thing, I suppose. All right. Are you coming out? Nope. Just moving around the corner. All right. Okay. Good luck. Thanks, man. <laughs> okay.